Welcome to this episode of Your Property Business, the video podcasts that help you get the most out of your own property business. I think that's interesting because having the end in, having the end in mind so, so powerful. I sort of ask people is sort of quite often is where where are you trying to get to? What is I mean I, I think putting a number on it is quite helpful for me. Putting you know what is the number you want to achieve and why and and, and I think without the number it's hard to prioritise what the task should be. Um, and like you say without the end in mind it's hard to where do I go next? Well anywhere you want if you don't know where you're going you can go literally yeah. wherever you want to do. So and I think that's quite important. It sounds like you've always been fairly like you say, driven towards the result and well, knowing what the result is. And I guess that might lead on to a different question, which, you know, maybe we'll get there in a minute or two, but now what? I mean, <laughs> I don't want to skip over the sort of self build particularly, but you've, but you've done a, an investment, you've placed to live, and then you're, 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 you know, you're chucking yourself into property in a quite heavy way from what I see you're doing. What, what is your kind of, where's your head at now with, with property and what, what would that goal look like for you and et cetera? Sure. Uh, so it's, it's a really simple answer for me and that it kind of comes down to my boys. Uh, they're, they're the motivation, they're the, they're the reason, they're the reason I'm doing what I'm doing. And it was a little over a year ago now, you know, my, my motivation suddenly became, I would like to secure one property for each of them. That was, mm -hmm. that was where I started. That was, if you yeah. wanted to put a number on it, you know, I wanted to have one property for each of them. And that isn't at all to hand over to them, to gift them in any way, shape or form. That was kind of, I set myself a realistic target. Okay, if I buy one property a year, that'd be amazing. I'd be really happy with that. And if at the end of that, I have one property per per child, like I've, I've sort of met my, met my initial goal. Mm. And so that became my motivation. And then it was a case of okay, well, how am I going to achieve that? What do I need to do? Spent a lot of time educating myself, learning what I needed to know, and and deciding on what approach I was going to take in order to get there. And actually, um, you did a very similar call with Mark Chester, um, fantastic bloke, Mark, if you're watching. Uh, and uh, his, his his approach to um, you know how you would break down what your end goal was and how you're going to get there. I found that really useful. Um, he's actually mm. one of the first people I spoke to when I, when I started going to PIN. And that really kind of solidified, okay, I have this very clear target um, to achieve uh, for my for my kids. And they're a great motivator. Not only the, the, the challenge is, not only are they a great motivator, but they take up like all your time. <laughs> so it makes it really hard. You know, yeah. you're very much you're still working nine to five uh, and raising mm. two young children at the same time. Mm. So it's, it's a real challenge to try and mm. do all of this stuff. Uh, you know, it's primarily evenings and weekends. I, I, I can't, I can't sacrifice my, my nine to when does it be, to, uh, When does it become hard for you? When, when, when is the challenges to go, oh, bugger it, I'm not going to look at my mood today or <laughs> I'm not going to call that agent? Or do, do you find there are moments that you think, oh, this is actually quite tough? Because oh, when it's easy, it's easy. You don't yeah, get value when things are easy, uh, but it's the, just pushing through that. What, 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 lot, how have you been challenged? You, you hear a lot about, yeah, I'm sure you will hear Samuel Leeds tell you how easy it is. But at the same time, you may also hear somebody tell you that it's not easy, but it is simple. And I would argue it's 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 not necessarily easy or simple. It's a lot of hard work and it's uh, sometimes quite complex to get your head around exactly what it is that you're trying to achieve uh, from a technical standpoint. And I, I mean that in the sense of you, there are quite a lot of hoops to jump through to secure a purchase, to be compliant in what you're doing, particularly mm. around HMOs, as you know. And so it took a lot for me to kind of figure that out um, in the early stages. You can imagine that, um, you know, I figured out quite a lot of stuff about the mechanics of construction. Like, mm. that was really enjoyable and, and a fantastic learning experience. But in terms of like the sort of um, legislation around rental, um, it wasn't actually until I started to kind of manage my own um, buy to let property that I learned, I started mm. to learn about some of that, those aspects. And mm. so I found that quite challenging again in the, in, the, in the initial term that there's quite a lot of stuff there that I didn't even know about. You know, an agent is handling that like yourself, doing a great job, and I don't really think about it. But actually, I really enjoyed learning some of that. 
Um, and mm -hmm. that really helped me when it came to, okay, well, what's the next challenge to overcome? In this case, it's an HMO. So it's one step further, you know, down the sort of level of complexity. Um, who knows what it might be after that, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, that, that was the sort of um, the biggest challenge, I would say, was getting educated um, and understanding uh, how I'm going to meet all of these criteria in a market which quite often differs from, you know, some of the markets which are used as ideal investment locations on some of the um, platforms that you might uh, mm. experience when it comes to edu property education. So it's things mm. like being able to buy a, a lovely big, um, you know, 200 square meter, five or six beds property for 100k is like you can't do that in Norfolk <laughs> it's particularly not in Norwich um, so trying to find property that work um, is yeah a challenge but actually I'm finding yeah. that the more uh, the more time I've spent figuring that stuff out um, it's become easier it's, it was certainly a challenge to overcome in the, in the initial term but I found that the more I'm now talking to people about about those types of investments People are really interested. People want to come. Oh, you've got about fifty questions that they want to bombard you with, and the, on the plus side, I can answer those. You know, it's like I've I've really uh, it, it kind of validates the the work that I've done over the past year to learn mm -hmm. as much as I possibly can about the, these types of investments to make sure that mm -hmm. I understand what I think a good investment looks like and how also you're going to um, you know make that work longer term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Just just thinking, um, Taylor, about your next project. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about what you want to create? Um, it seems like you've got a sense of your product in the market. <clears throat> I think you, you and I think you put, put putting a decent amount of effort into achieving what you want to, you know, the, the product you want to offer. Um, give me a sense of why 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 you think it's important to put that thought thought into your project absolutely so one of the things we did with this place was to get it how we wanted it obviously mm. we we're going to live here. and that meant doing it to a really high finish uh, you know high standard that was a little bit more expensive and i appreciate that when when costing up a project you can't mm. always be quite so liberal with uh, you know the amount of money you put towards uh, the finish um that being said there are absolutely things that you can do that are cost effective but really impactful when it comes to the end goal, to the end, goal to the end result and for me i know i have a very clear vision of as to what i want to achieve particularly with this next project but also mm. with i knew i wanted to do an hmo mm. i wouldn't have been particular around student or professional in fact i offered mm. on several that would have been ideal as as professional hmos mm. Mm. Um, but I have a very clear vision as to what I want that to look and feel like um, because I know what my end customer wants. I know what my, my client is, is looking for. And so that becomes to me, it needs to be, it needs to tick all the boxes from the purchase angle, obviously, the location and the amenities and the type of property. Um, but then in terms of the internal finish and the quality of that finish, like it, it has to meet a certain criteria in order to appeal to your target market and particularly for, for this property that we're getting <coughs> or that we're, we're in the conveyancing process for um it's it, its location is probably midway between the university and um the city so you mm -hmm. could argue like well if you were going for a university um target market somewhere like west Earlham would be your ideal um because of the proximity to the university. If you're going for the, the arts college, obviously you'd want to be a bit closer to the city. Mm. And this property, I, I know its location will work, obviously um, partly because I, I know several people who've got similar properties in the area who've successfully mm. let them out. Um, but similarly, I've, I've done enough research that I know that this will um, appeal for multiple reasons other than just mm. being close to the university. Mm. So with that, I know I've ticked that box for location. Mm. I've also ticked boxes in terms of um, availability of parking, uh, close you know, proximity to um, entertainment and to um, a local supermarket. Um, it's uh, got ultra fast broadband. Uh, it's got garden space. It's got ample room for um, the 
the number of tenants that we're looking to um, have live in the property. Mm -hmm. And we've got the means to add value to also improve that offering. Mm. And so that in my mind is not only do I want to make it amazing because I want it to be the first property to let out when we go to market. Mm. But I also know that if I put a little bit more effort in now up front, I'm going to realize that on the revaluation um, mm. when I come to refinance that in two mm. years time. 